Hokey dokey. Let's go ahead and work out two examples for this problem. In this problem, they give us u of s equals negative 3 times 5 to the s. So this is a type of function where we will basically just find the derivative of the main piece, like usual, and then because we have a negative 3 sort of coefficient to this main piece, that coefficient, negative 3, will sort of just carry over into the derivative. So if we're finding u prime of s, we will basically just keep the negative 3 and find the derivative of 5 to the s. 5 to the s has or is a function of the form um, a constant raised to the x. So it's an exponential function. So its derivative will be 5 to the x times ln or natural log of 5. And so we'll just use s in place of x. So we will have negative 3 times 5 to the s times natural log of 5. So this is our derivative. And now they ask us to plug in 3 over 2, 5, 4, and 9 over 2. And hopefully just one of these values will be correct. So it's kind of tedious, but really if you can set it up, I would highly recommend uh, using Excel for this because you can type it in once and we may even be able to use like a slider for this one and we'll talk about how that works uh, so we have 5 to the s and then ln of 5 okay so uh, with the slider we can basically use substitution so since here this s is the only place we're plugging in the s value, we can start with s equals 3 over 2. In other words, in this case, it would be a equals 3 over 2. And like that, we get negative 53.9. Negative 53.9 does not match negative 120. So we move on to the next one. We substitute a with 5 we get negative 15,000 ish so that does not match negative 33,000 we plug in 4 and we get negative 3,017 that matches so that's probably our answer and just to confirm 9 over 2 we get whoa oh yeah so negative 6747 negative 6747 so that does not match that either so with sort of a substitution way of calculation, we can see that C is our answer. And so the way you could go about doing this in Excel, just to give you a little tidbit of knowledge here, into any random cell, say, I don't know, B1, you could type in negative, so for negative three, just to make sure, I would do negative one times three, and then times, in parentheses, 5 raised to the, and then I would click on the cell A1. And what we could do is use that to be like our, how our A was in Desmos. So A1 would represent the values we're plugging in each time. And then you'll type in another asterisk and then ln of 5. And then that'd be the end of it. So then in A1, you could type in 3 over 2 and then get that answer in B1 cell and then type in 5 and then get that answer in B1 cell and so on and sort of do it the same way as we did in Desmos. All right, let's do one more real quick. So for this one, we have this function, a little bit easier to deal with. It's a power function rather than exponential function. So we will just take the derivative by taking the derivative of, and so really that five will come out. We'll leave the z and then subtract one from the exponent to get z to the fourth. And just like you know in other problems, we will take the seven, the negative seven, and multiply it by the five. Let's see if we can approach this in a similar way. Let's do negative thirty-five a raised to the fourth. Yeah, so. And then we'll add an a slider. So we'll start with a is equal to negative, or sorry, just 7 over 2, 
from option A. So we're checking to see if A is our answer. So we get negative 5252. So negative 5252. And I will just trust that this is most likely our answer because that matches so closely. And so for time's sake, I won't worry about plugging in all of the other options. Hopefully the idea makes sense. All right.